Are you getting tired of default OBS scene transitions like cut and fade? Don't get me wrong, there's a time and a place for those, but I'm about to tell you about a transition that will really change things up for your stream. As you guessed from the title of this video, I'm talking about the Move Transition plugin for OBS. What this does is automatically animate each source between its starting and ending points during scene transition. I think it looks really cool and it's something to set your stream apart from the rest. In this video I'll give you a quick guide on how to set up the plugin and also a walkthrough of some important settings. So let's get into it. Installing the Move Transition plugin is just like any other OBS plugin. First, go to the OBS project page for Move Transition. There's a link in the description. Next, click Download. Then download the Windows Installer zip. Once downloaded, right click on the zip and click Extract All, then click Extract. This will open the folder you just extracted. Run the Move Transition Installer EXE by double clicking. I got a Defender Smart Screen warning when running it, but don't worry, I've confirmed it's safe by running the installer in a sandbox and reviewing its activity. You can see the results with some more detail in the description if you're interested. If you're not comfortable with this, you can always manually install the files by downloading the normal Windows zip instead. To get through Smart Screen, click More Info, then click Run Anyway. The rest of the installation process is pretty self explanatory, but feel free to follow along. Once installation is complete, open OBS. Now click on the Transitions drop down menu. You should now see Add Move as an option. Go ahead and add a new move transition and give it a name. This will open the properties menu for the transition you've just created. Let's go through the important settings here. The first setting is match if the source name. This setting will determine how sources are matched between scenes. If you're using the same source between your scenes, this probably won't be very relevant to you. But if you have two different sources that you'd like the transition to match up, this setting will do that for you. For example, as you can see on screen now, whilst it's the same camera in the two scenes, there are actually two different sources that have been matched using this setting. The next notable settings are the matched items settings. These are the settings that apply to sources that match between scenes. The easing setting makes the sources ease in and out as it gets closer to the starting or ending points of the animation. Each setting gives a pretty different look, so I recommend trying them out to see what sticks with you. The easing function setting specifies the rate of change in speed for the animation. They can each be used to get a pretty specific look, so have a play around to see which one you like. For more info on these functions, go to easings.net, there's a link in the description. The transition setting determines the transition that's used between point A and point B in the move transition. Sometimes a fade transition can be a good idea for the matched items to look more seamless. Try it out and see what looks best for you. The transition scale type setting determines how different sized sources are scaled in the transition. Showing on screen now is a quick animation to explain what each setting does. The curve setting determines the amount of curve for the animation between the start and the end positions. Positive number will make it curve away from the canvas center and a negative number will make it curve towards the canvas center. Next, there are settings for appearing and disappearing sources. Most of the settings are the same as I previously went over, except for the following. Zoom, which determines whether a source will zoom in and out on its appearance or disappearance instead of staying the same size. This is a personal preference, each option gives a certain look. And Position. The position setting determines where an appearing or disappearing source will come from or go to. Once you're finished with the transition properties, you can then set how long the transition should take in the scene transition section. The plugin also gives you the capability to move a group or scene source around a scene without transitioning between scenes. You can do this by right clicking on the scene source or group you want to move. Click filters, then add a move source filter. I'm only going over the transition aspect of the plugin in this video, so that might be something I'll make a video about in the future. Well that's it for this one, now you can make cool looking scene transitions for your stream. I also recommend using the transition table plugin, I've made a video for that one, I'll annotate it somewhere up here. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and uh, if you're interested in my stream setup, I stream over at twitch.tv slash nato62. See you next time.